Professional Investor Com's daily brief. The answer to your question is learn the goddamn process, trade your trading plans, don't take too much risk on any one trade, and just let yourself get rich. Hello everyone, welcome back to the Rational Investor Com's daily brief. Free public broadcast summary. Woohoo party! All that. Um, hope you're having yourself a good day. Actually, yesterday I tried to get this uh, video done in about uh, 15 minutes. Eh, I think it's probably not a bad idea. We try and stick to that time window. So here we are, 9.03. Uh, let's try and have this uh, public summary done here by, uh, let's say, 18 minutes past the hour. Uh, and uh, hopefully Brian can sort of establish a new sort of routine for the public show. Um, yeah, it looks like the stock market here is trying to work its way higher. You know, we're in this sort of no man's land here. We're right at the midpoint. Um, and uh, I don't know whether I really want to get too uber bullish or bearish in here. And also notice histogram, uh, it's not a hell of a lot jumping out at us. The market's not really either overbought or oversold. So believe it or not, actually, I could see the market work its way higher here. Uh, we do, of course, have a FOMC event. Um, so uh, um, the rule, of course, is that we shouldn't uh, really interpret anything into price action for a full hour following uh, the Fed, but you know we probably ought to just acknowledge you know spade is a spade. Uh, January barometers. Oh, let's see if the screen will load. Uh, look at that! Holy crap! So uh, first day, first hour, first week, everything was pretty sanguine, all heading in the same direction. As I kind of pointed out yesterday, something hit the fan there. Uh, just about middle of the month, day, eh? 17th, 18th kind of idea when we were going through that options expiry event. How is that going to play itself out? And wow, huge, explosive rally coming out the other side. Uh, I don't think we can uh, declare megaphone. In fact, I think even re I remember saying, um, I don't know, I think it was like last week's uh, Tuesday uh, video which uh, Tuesdays we have our secret options formula club. Maybe it was Wednesday because it was following that. And uh, David, our uh, secret options formula club uh, quarterback, uh, David O, he was kind of saying, you know, yeah, you can draw a megaphone off of this, but the fact that the market has resolved to the upside basically breaks the megaphone pattern. Uh, and of course, it being January, as January goes, so goes the year. You got the impression that uh, well, they're setting up the stock market for a pretty substantial rally here through 2024. Uh, in sort of further anecdotal sort of evidence that the cycle has turned, and now we are officially into uh, what I would consider the greed cycle or, uh, you know, the growth part of our um 35 year generational shift. Of course, I think it's the millennials. They are coming online now. And I can see a lot of them, you know, at TRI, hell, I'm in my fifties, right? My son's in his twenties. I mean, I guess you could argue that he would be a millennial. Um, but I can see all you guys. I mean, hell, even the uh, school term here, um, far exceeded uh, the amount of participation that we were expecting. Um, so you guys are all coming. You're all, and you know, of course, crypto, uh, along with a lot of sort of tech proxies uh, in this world, is just booming away here. So I, I certainly don't think it's a good idea to step in front of this. And fascinating too, how, of course, if you go on social media and you go and uh, you know you listen to sort of the the nouveau experts in the market, uh, they're talking about how, uh, well, probably not so much anymore, but recession, 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 it's all going to go to hell in a handbasket. Yeah, I don't see that, especially with the way this January barometer looks. Holy crap. Get ready. Um, you know, and also, too, um, you know, we have uh, Tuesdays, today being Tuesday. Uh, this is uh, Crypto Tuesday. 
Um, so we probably should spend a, a good chunk of time in the after party talking crypto. Uh, but we do have uh, TRI's CTO Seward on the call on Tuesdays. Uh, and it's always a pleasure checking in with him. Of course, his names um, all did substantially well in, um, you know, over the past six, 12 months. Um, I suppose there, man, there's probably a, a dog or two in there. You know, nobody's going to be right 100% of the time. Um, but uh, he's even uh, told me today that he went and did some shopping in a new fundamental name that he really likes the story. Uh, and he also told me, too, that a good chunk of the capital that has been allocated towards him using, he does have invested. Uh, and I even noticed things like, uh, you know, if we, you know, this is the, obviously the stock market, but you could make the argument, you know, if we uh, look at something like, uh, you know, uh, the QQQs, this would be the NASDAQ sort of stock market stocks. Um, thank you, sir. And the NASDAQ, of course, booming higher, um, you know, making new highs. Show me a new high and I'll show you a buy. All that kind of talk. Bear divs played themselves out and up we go. Uh, I think you could make the argument that uh, a huge part, and all I hear out of, you know, sort of talking heads is uh, AI, 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 EI, EIO, or something like that. <laughs> uh, but, of course, NVIDIA, you know, leading the charge there. Up another one and a half percent, Druck and Miller making a fortune. I guess you could make the argument that uh, uh, bear put spreads maybe didn't work so well there. Mm. Again, you know, it's a trader's life. Uh, but the point here is uh, with that market booming, obviously those people in uh, crypto, um, you know, the proxy there is uh, these kind of um R N D R, I guess crypto. Um, you know, this is, I guess, our proxy in the space. And you notice, uh, I mean, basically it's the same kind of performance. And look who's trying to break out here. Um, I don't know whether I would really classify that as a buy signal just yet. I wouldn't mind seeing a little bit more bullish structure, but you know, there is a big fat W staring you in the face now. Um, so, you know, this market is just humming along here. Um, suppose we could probably talk more about that later on, but just, uh, I guess just the whole point of this January barometer stock market humming, I'd be a little bit leery about getting too bullish right now, because of course we've got, uh, FOMC, uh, tomorrow. And I get the impression, and if anything, this kind of scares me a little bit. Uh, for the other side of this FOMC event, because you can see they're bidding everything up. Actually, interesting, NASDAQ's a little bit softer here this morning. You can see the Dow, the S&P, hell, even the uh, Russell 2000 was getting bid. Crypto, interesting environment here in crypto now. You see Ethereum is actually outperforming Bitcoin uh, here. And so as a result, you can see that total index is just rocking and rolling. And, uh, you know, I think the hot, sexy name du jour, this Solana, uh, again, same sort of thing as the Rend. I don't know whether I would actually consider this a quote unquote buy signal yet. Wouldn't mind getting a little bit of bullish structure now on the other side of this trend line, but, you know, catching a bid uh, substantially here. And I wouldn't be surprised if this thing moves up a bit more. Um, so, you know, the backdrop here is uh, strong like bull. I just am a little leery about being right in the face of the FOMC meeting. Um, U.S. dollar index, you know, this is an interesting story unto itself. Is the U.S. dollar itself transitioning from that, that fear proxy? And we're going to go bury our head in the sand and buy U.S. T-bills. And so we're going to dump things like euros and Canadian loonies and Australian currencies and all those kind of things. Um, you know, that's sort of the hallmark of the, uh, the fear cycle is the uh, preference towards those hard uh, commodity uh, currencies and assets. I think I've told you all along here, I think Canada's a short now, sadly. Um, do love the U.S. market and I love the U.S. dollar. And I'm just wondering whether we are now going to start transitioning into a phase where I think that the U.S. is going to have a substantial premium over the world with regard to interest rates. 
Uh, and I even heard more talk today that the Eurozone, not necessarily into recession completely out of the whole Eurozone. Ironically enough, you know, the countries that are actually propping up uh, the Eurozone now are Portugal, <laughs> which I thought was hilarious. And I think I even saw like a report that some of the other pigs nations were actually now helping. Germany now is actually in a bit of trouble, and I think they are fully in recession. Um, so anyway, point of the matter here is we do have a big event here in the U.S. dollar tomorrow. Given the fact that we are working a megaphone, I do expect some pretty crazy ass uh, volatility uh, in this. But as long as the uh, U.S. data is still very strong, it's very hard for me to uh, see um, the U.S. actually uh, lowering interest rates um, or even, you know, any kind of talk of recession, which means I don't I don't see the U.S. dollar losing its premium over things like the euro. And if anything, that should make Stuart a little happier, although it probably means more inflation in his life. Uh, but uh, theoretically, TRI uh, is, uh, is uh, a U.S. dollar machine here. Uh, so hopefully uh, that works in his favor. But I suppose we'll talk to you. Yeah, we're coming up on uh, 14 minutes past the hour. So I got about five minutes just to wind this up. So you can see. Heading into the FOMC right now, kind of a mixed bag with regard to the market. Um, yeah, actually, I was quite surprised, uh, pleased, if anything. Had a pretty good day, day trading uh, crude oil, taking the opening range trade uh, and slowly working that account up over time. You know, I'm all about slow and steady wins a race. Don't really like to push things. Um, and so uh, actually getting close to... Uh, I think about 40% of uh, good old Hoag's objective to uh, be considered a half decent trader. I mean, they give you these funny little accounts here. I mean, $50,000, you're not working with 50,000 bucks when you do this combine. I mean, really what this is, is they say, look, you can uh, lose two Gs. If you lose two Gs, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> um, but uh, we won't talk to you and we won't consider you sort of a legit trader until you uh, show us that you can make three Gs. So anyway, uh, that's slowly climbing up over time, trading these little micros, um, pretty good day to day on balance, demonstrator of best practices. That's the most important thing for me, you know, especially running this school and all this kind of stuff. So, you know, nice little opening range trade. Uh, market worked up, followed the plan, uh, process goals, no mistakes. I eh, got a bit of a topping signal, so I decided to take profits. Micro contracts, 183 bucks. What the hell? Uh, better than a kick in the pants. Um, and, um, you know, on the big boy, geez, that'd be like a $2,000 day. But eh, I'm happy with uh, what we accomplished here today. So slow and steady wins the race. What you'd ideally like to see is um, on balance, your winning days are bigger than your losing days. You're never going to be right 100% of the time. So get used to that, folks. But uh, yeah, today was a pretty good winning day. So anyway, as I showed you, that um, as soon as that count hits uh, $53,000, then uh, eh, I'll go and hang out with the top step guys a little bit more. But I'm just slowly taking these opening trade trades and just building that account up over time. Uh, as I had said sort of earlier, Euro area, this is probably where we're going to see the most sort of economic hardship, especially with that idiot over there in Eastern Europe, murdering people right, left, and center. Uh, it's making life a little bit challenging. Uh, it'll be interesting to see whether the Americans can get dragged in. You can see that the sort of this axis of evil, you, uh, you know, Russia and Iran and I guess North Korea. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, and then China to a certain degree, although I think China is trying to play both sides of the fence. Um you can see they're desperately trying to drag the U.S. into some sort of, you know, they really want to bring the U.S. into this war bullshit thing that they've caused over in that region of the world. If anything, what I would say is the Americans should go to, but this is Brian's opinion, doesn't have anything to do with the market, but they should go to the Middle East and they should say, look, you guys here need to solve this problem. It's not our problem. You guys need to get your act together and somehow figure out a way to all live together peacefully. <laughs> Good luck, but oh well. 
Um, so anyway, point of the matter here, uh, I think if you're going to look for any sort of area weakness, uh, look for Euro. And then, of course, uh, Euro weakness, you know, Germany being the engine there, still in a bit of trouble. Um, and uh, and of course, uh, China just recently um, there that Evergrande uh, real estate for Casey bubble bullshit nonsense that we, we're rammed down our throat there. Five, 10 years ago, I sure hope the world learned a valuable lesson from that. Uh, they are now, I think, a Hong Kong court. Mind you, pff, what does court mean in China? I almost find that laughable. <laughs> a Hong Kong court says something and we're that's supposed to mean something to the CCP? Give me a break. Anyway, uh, so, you know, I mean, you've got that fiasco. So if anything, this makes perfect sense. You know, North America is... Uh, is uh, basically in the sweet spot of the, the world economic uh, engine right now. And I don't know whether it makes sense betting against North America. If anything, what should happen is we got to get rid of this China lover, uh, you know, quasi communist doofus here in Canada. And then, uh, and then maybe the Canadian economy can start shifting into participating with the U.S. economy because the U.S. economy is growing pretty damn strong here. So anyway, I wouldn't bet against the U.S. right now, that's for sure. Here's sort of your summary for the day. As I said, uh, FOMC tomorrow. Um, I think generally speaking, the market is fairly well bid. Yeah, you can see off about a quarter of a percent there. Well, I guess about a little less than half a percent on the NASDAQ itself. And yeah, maybe you find that uh, things calm down a little bit uh, heading into that FOMC event. Uh, I think we plan to have an FOMC uh, video, which is kind of fun. We just sort of chit chat and listen to Chip Pal talk about all his uh, fun prognostications and listen to all the media people extol about how much they're in love with him or not. Um, and really, I think the fireworks that you're all sort of expecting in the market will probably develop following uh, this Fed uh, announcement meeting. Finish off this video here, already over time. So yeah, just quick summary. Candle body highs for trade location. So not a big surprise. Bitcoin's worked its way back up into these candle body highs. Do we get some sort of blow off top or something uh, into this huge wick uh, following the FOMC event? I think I've told you guys repeatedly of late. I think that, you know, here is your trading range. I did this on the total market, but we can do it on Bitcoin as well. It's basically the same thing. There's the top end of your range, way up top there uh, at that uh, ETF uh, FOMO buy peak. And there's the bottom end of your range. So welcome to your new trading neighborhood. If we get, and now because this is like an atom, um, if we do get a nice little polite M up top here, um, yeah, that probably uh, would be appropriate. And um, if we do roll over, I wouldn't even be surprised to be honest that you're probably going to get like double bottoms against those tail lows. Uh, so there's not really a hell of a lot going on here in crypto for the time being. If anything, I think, you know, just the comments that I made on the Sunday shows, you know, until we either break out through 50 G's and close up there solidly on some good momentum signals and stuff, I, I, I think that's your top of your trading range. And I think this probably persists for a while. And then conversely, uh, you know, whether it be uh, Wyckoff checks, 50% uh, trend lines, you know, wicks and tails like to be eaten. These tails here look a little suspicious. 38.2s there. I think that's probably the bottom end of your range down in that area. And I think we're probably just stuck in that for the next little while. So slow and steady wins a race. Don't take no wooden nickels. Remember what your number one job is. Uh, you know, pretty simple market summary um, ahead of the FOMC. And uh, be sure to tune in uh, for the free broadcast there tomorrow on that. Uh, always a lively event. Um, I suppose we'll just finish off. Uh, Seward, you ready to rock this thing? Let's see if he's here. Yes. <laughs> oh, that was a definitive yes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, uh, Seward's ready to rock your world. And uh -huh. of course, if you did want to uh, come and listen to Seward, 
uh, special treat. I mean, absolute genius in this space. He found Luna at like, you know, 50 cents. He wanted to buy NVIDIA at 20 bucks, maybe $25. Wanted to buy Bitcoins at $600. <laughs> he missed his fill. Thanks to Brian, who wouldn't let him change his uh, chase the market. <laughs> um, he's got a bunch of names in the hopper. You want to uh, you want to get rich from this, and uh, you know just good fundamental analysis. Uh, you, every Tuesday he's on the uh, show, and you can come in. Just click the free link, free trial, and you can come and listen to uh, Seward uh, talk to you uh, crypto at length. Um, and uh and i mean you see how easy it is to uh to sign up so all right would love to see you on the other side slow and steady wins a race pma for the win hugs and kisses only thing left for brian to say at this point is bye for now